Support for Radio Friends comes from LaBrunere Financial, where they work to ensure a lifetime of financial security for people from all walks of life, from investment services to retirement plans. If you're looking for a trustworthy company that has the experience and knowledge to put your interests first, contact LaBrunere Financial, a community-based investment counseling firm since 1966. and welcome to Radio Friends on Monday, August the 15th. I want to introduce you to Brittany Whitney. Good to have you here, Brittany Whitney, uh, from the Most Policy Initiative. I know we've talked about this before, but some people may not be familiar. What is MOST? Right. So MOST Policy Initiative, we're a local nonprofit that provides accessible nonpartisan research information to state lawmakers and communities so that all Missourians can make more informed decisions. Yeah. So you did a survey, right? We did. With the lawmakers. We did. So we asked the lawmakers and that we've been working with over the past couple years, um, everybody who requested information, we said, what did you think of it? What did we do well? Is it actually objective and nonpartisan? For the second year in a row, 100% of lawmakers said, yes, this information is objective and nonpartisan. We appreciate that you really are this reliable how, source. How many lawmakers have you actually worked with? We have worked with over, I think the number is about 85. So it's just under half of the entire General Assembly. Is it both parties? Both that you're parties. So about 62% of our requests come from Republicans and then the rest from Democrats. And they both parties have said that they appreciate it and it's nonpartisan. Yes. So we don't get everybody who requests a note doesn't fill out the survey. So we are working with kind of a subsample. Right. But we had both parties, both chambers, the House and the Senate responded to the survey and they said this is a reliable source of information. We do not think it's partisan. How many of them have actually acted upon the information that you've given them? Yeah, it's a great question. So it was another question we asked them in the survey. We said, what did you use the note for? So there's a ton of different things, I think even more so than when we surveyed last year. They're using it from, most people use it when they're preparing a testimony to talk about one of their bills. But what we're also kind of excited to see is that more than half of the people who responded use it when they're talking to colleagues about their bills, when they're drafting new bills or drafting amendments. Only a handful of people said they used it to determine how to vote. But I think what we're seeing is that the information is kind of being used in the conversations before the votes are happening, which is a really good place place to, you know, bring evidence into the conversation. Do you feel that the information that you have provided has shaped the way they actually vote? That's a great question. I'm not sure. I, I don't know that that's necessarily our number one goal either. I think what we're really hoping to do is have more evidence while people are having conversations. We know that science isn't going to be the only thing that goes into their vote, um, but it is really, really, I think we are very confident that people are incorporating that evidence that they wouldn't normally have had. We also asked lawmakers, if we didn't exist, where would you get this information? And about half of them said, I would just look for it myself. Um, these are really, really busy people that have a ton of bills coming to their plate. So if we can kind of provide that information and lower that barrier for them, I think that's certainly information that wasn't going to be in the conversation before. Right. Right. Well, I appreciate what you do. And it's interesting to know that you've had it from both parties and that both parties have said it's nonpartisan. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, but we don't know if it's actually affected the vote or not. Well, we will continue to survey right. them and, and, and right. figure that out, Paul. Thank you so much. If people want more information about MOST, what do they do? They're going to go to mostpolicyinitiative.org. They can learn about what we're doing, read all of our research information, um, and donate to support this work. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks so much, Paul. Right. Continued success. Thanks. All right. Now I want to introduce you to the Adult and Community Services Manager at Daniel Boone Regional Library, Lauren Williams. Good to have you here. Thanks. Lauren. It's good to be here, Paul. And we're talking about One Read, right? We are. We are. It's our 21st year this year. This is our... 21 years? Yes. Yes. Yeah, this, it's a, the community-wide reading program uh, for adults in Boone and Callaway County that the Daniel Boone Regional Library has coordinated for 21 years. Okay, one read is what? So we invite adults in Boone and Callaway County to read the same book over the summer, and then we have a month of programs in September, including the author talk, uh, around the topics and themes in that book. And we have a task force of community organizations, media outlets um, like you all that help us plan, provide speakers, and promote the event. So it's just a fun month-long uh 
series of programs. So when does it start? It starts September 1st um, with our first uh, book discussion will be that day. Uh, the author's being interviewed on Speaking of the Arts, um, Diana Moxon's show here locally. But we also have, um, if you're an artist here in town, either amateur or student, we have an art exhibit that we do every year. And this year, the art theme is uh, Possibility and Promise. And um, we are taking submissions August 26th and 27th at Orr Street. Um, so we're looking for works that explore transformation, the idea of becoming. Um, and so take a look at our website, oneread.org, for more details. But so that's people can get started now reading the book and also working on their art oh project. God, you've got so much going on. We do. We do. And the book is, uh, tell us about the book. Sure. The book is called um, The Big Door Prize by M.O. Walsh. And it is a quirky and charming um, look at a small town in Louisiana. And this sort of unassuming photo booth-like machine shows up in a grocery store. And it promises for $2 and a swab of your cheek, it will tell you your true life's potential. And so the residents' lives are suddenly kind of shaken up by this. You have you know nurses and teachers and doctors wanting, like, I should be an athlete or a musician or a magician. Um, and there's a married couple at the center who've been together for a number of years, and her reading says she's supposed to be royalty. And so that kind of puts this um, rockiness in their marriage. There's a young teen whose twin brother has passed away, and he's trying to figure out who he should be. So there, there are some heavier themes around teen mental health um, that he does with a really kind of a light touch. Um, so we've got programs on, you know, career making career changes, a tarot card reading. Um, we have a, a, a a panel on teen mental health. So we're, we're exploring a lot of the themes in a lot of different ways. So what what are some of those, those uh, again, that you mentioned? The, the, the themes? The themes. Oh, so teen mental health, um, making, making a, a career change, or um, uh, there's also... Um, why am I blanking? <laughs> there's a, um, a small town life. Um, there's a, just, a, just a number of different things. So um, we are having panels and book discussions and presentations yeah. and a lot of those things. So this will all be during the month of September? All during the month of September, yeah. What do people need to do to participate in this? Um, so go to the library, check out the book. You, we've got plenty of copies. We also have audiobook and ebook copies, large print, if people prefer to read that way. And then go to oneread.org to learn about the art exhibit, the writing contest, and other programs that we've got coming up in you know, September. When, when you mentioned we have the ebook, when did ebooks become available with the library? Uh, you know, I don't know the exact date. I do know that we had downloadable audiobooks first, and that was, uh, I think, you know, like 2010 or something like that. So, um, and then ebooks came. Yeah, yeah. But can you imagine just to think of how everything has changed over the past 20 years? Yes, yes. It's yeah, are the digital checkouts. I mean, print is still up there, but yeah. but that's the that's the one that's increasing the most. I think during the pandemic, it was the a lifesaver. Digital checkouts. Yeah, that people could download things from the library. Okay. Yep. If you want more information on any of this, uh, where do they go to find out? They can go to www.oneread.org. Okay. www.oneread.org. Or you can just go into the library and exactly. find out more about it. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for coming by. I, I appreciate chatting with thank you. Thank you for having me, Paul. I appreciate oh, it. You're welcome. Uh, continued success with everything you're doing. Thank and you. And tell my friend Sarah Howard we said hi. I will do. Okay. Uh, something you'd like to hear or see, I would love to hear from you. Drop me an email. That's pepperp at missouri.edu. Bye-bye.